A very good morning to everyone. A very good morning to everyone. Welcome in the class. The topic of today's class is MRI, that is Magnetic Resonance Imaging, and fMRI. These two are the topics. But before beginning with the topic, let us have a small introduction about an academy. So let me see that I am online. Yes, okay. So just give me a second. Okay. So before beginning with the class, let us have a small introduction about An Academy. An Academy is one of the India's largest platform for the preparation of CSIR UGC NET examination. And you are watching this video on the channel Let's Crack CSIR UGC NET. A little bit about myself. I'm your educator Farida Johar Bandhupala. I have teaching experience of 10 years. I've qualified MP SLET examination in year 2018. If you are opting for an academy, what all things you are going to get? You are going to get daily life classes. Daily life classes is going to keep you in that momentum of studies. Life classes will make you able to ask your doubts and queries directly with the faculty members. Then live tests and quizzes will make you evaluate that how much you have learned so far. Structured courses are designed in such a way that you can complete all the 13 units in a small span of time because 13 units are quite lengthy so they should be covered in a specific manner so the syllabus is quite structured then you are opting for whichever category like for our case that is CSIR UGC net uh, you will have unlimited access towards all the videos which are recorded in this category an academy tries to conduct free live classes. These free live classes are conducted on YouTube and special classes. So for uh, taking the YouTube classes, you, what you need to do is you need to just download the An Academy learning app. After downloading the app, uh, make your account over there and use my referral code FB01 for attending the class. If you are using my referral code FB01, uh, then you will be able to attend the v uh, video classes, live special classes of other educators as well. So that was about uh, special classes. For YouTube, you just need to subscribe the channel and you will be getting the notifications. Uh, recently, a discount is going on for 12 months. It is 11,550 rupees. For 24 months, it is 16,800 rupees only. And you will be getting an additional 10% discount if you are using my referral code FB01. If you are using my referral code FB01, you will be getting an additional 10% discount. For 12 months, it is going to cost you 10,395 and for uh, 24 months, it is going to cost you 15,120 rupees. So the topic of today is MRI. MRI. Full form of MRI is magnetic. Resonance Imaging Magnetic Resonance Imaging This is the topic So we will be talking about this in detail So Magnetic Resonance Imaging Or it is also called as Nuclear Resonance Imaging Nuclear Magnetic Resonance ima Imaging So Magnetic Resonance will be same N will be for nuclear. Nuclear magnetic resonance imaging. So this is a technique which is used in the medi medical world. So it is a medical imaging technique. It is used in medical science. Medical science. And it is used for, used for visualizing the structure. Visualizing. The structure and function of body. Visualizing the structure and function of body. These are the uses of MRI. We will be discussing this all in detail. But for introduction you should know that it is used in medical science. And it is used for visualizing the structures of the body. Now if it is uh, said that it is used for visualizing the structure of the body. 
so what does it provide which kind of a structure like uh, what all things are used for visualizing the structure of the body we go for sonography we go for x-rays and many other things so how x-ray sonography and mri they are different from each other so when we are talking specifically about mri it provides detailed structure of body in any plane so provides detailed structure of body in any plane in any plane like when we are going for a x-ray and we are standing like this we will just be able to get the front picture and then the technician will ask you to move a little bit and then he'll be taking another side view and then he'll ask us to move like this so that way we'll be able to get the whole picture through x-ray but in mri it is a different thing it will be giving us the picture in all of the planes y axis x axis and z axis all the three axis can be covered with the help of mri so mri provides a much greater contrast between different soft tissues of the body then as compared to the ct scan does see when we are going for x ray it is just telling us about the bones when we are going for sonography it is just telling us about the soft tissues and that to the distinction is not that very clear so primarily the doctor is going to ask us for x ray and then sonography and then mri that is the sequence they take so when we are going for mri it provides much get greater provides much greater contrast greater contrast between the different soft tissues of the body between the soft tissues of the body soft tissues of body so it is better than a uh, ct scan better contrast than ct scan better contrast than ct scan so what is the full form of ct it is the computer aided topography so it is better than ct scan and if it is better than ct scan then for or what all type of tissues it is used so it is basically used for neurological tissues neurological tissues then it is used for musculoskeletal tissues musculo skeletal tissues then it is used for cardiovascular tissues cardiovascular tissues then it is highly used for various oncological purposes that is cancer these all are various important uses of mri if someone has some uh, tumor or he is uh, suffering from migraine he'll be going for mri there is some uh, disturbance in the functioning of the muscular skeletal tissue and which is unable to be captured through x ray they can go for mri then cardiovascular problems can also be addressed or can also be studied with the help of mri and cancer can also be studied with mri so this is the thing why for what it is used now coming to uh, the thing how it is done so mri there are no ionizing radiations used no ionizing radiations no ionizing radiations used first and foremost important thing no ionizing radiation would be used so if no ionizing radiation is used then what all things will be used in this for the purpose so use of powerful magnets will be done and it will align the body's natural magnetization that is the hydrogen atom of the body in that particular direction so powerful magnets the powerful magnets or powerful magnetic field align the nuclear magnetization align the nuclear magnetization of hydrogen atoms of water of 
water in body. This is the principle. Powerful magnetic field is going to align the hydrogen atoms of the body in a specific field. After that, radio frequency fields are used to systematically alter the alignment of this magnetization causing hydrogen nuclei to produce a rotating magnetic field. And this rotating magnetic field will be detected by a scanner. So after this, when it is aligned in a certain direction, radio frequency fields, radio frequency fields will be applied, applied to systematically to systematically align the magnetization to align the magnetization and this is going to produce a rotating magnetic field by the hydrogen atoms this will produce this will produce rotating magnetic field rotating magnetic field and this can be detected by scanner detected by scanner so this signal can be manipulated by addition of more magnetic fields to build up enough information to reconstruct the image of the body. More magnetic field is going to give us a better picture of the body. Then MRI is a new technology. It's not a very age old technology and it has been in use uh, from last 30 years as compared to X-ray it dates back to 110 years. So MRI is 30 year old around 30 year old better to say it this way then x-rays is approximately 110 years old so the first mri image was published in year 1973 first mri in year 1973 1973 and the first study was performed on human um, was in year 1977 first mri in 1973 uh, in humans in humans in year 1977 so this is the basic now let us talk about uh, the other things so magnetic resonance imaging was developed to actually gain the knowledge of the nuclear magnetic resonance in the body because how the hydrogen atoms of the body is going to react to the external magnetic field and in the earlier years when this technique was referred it was also called as nuclear magnetic resonance imaging the initial two synonyms which we read for this that is MRI and NMRI uh, after that the However, as uh, the word nuclear uh, occurs, it is quite uh, relatable to the ionizing radiation because of the atom bomb and nuclear power plant. So, the N uh, or the nuclear word was dropped down and only uh, thing which was in use was MRI. So, scientists they still uh, use the term NMRI because it is uh, more specific and they are not going to get confused with the nuclear radiation and all so they use the word an MRI so the term magnetic resonance topography is also sometimes used so uh, the words MRI then uh, an MRI then magnetic resonance topography this T is for tomography these are the three things then after that uh, there is a scientist and the name of scientist is Paul Lauterbur uh, and he was the one who originally gave the term zeugmatography a Greek term which is uh, which has a meaning that which is used for joining he gave a different word so do not get at all confused with the third with the 
Next term, which is for MRI only, that is zeugmatography. Zeugmatography. Zeugmatography is also the word for MRI only, and it was given by a scientist, and his name is for Paul Lauterbur. So. Zeugmatography is a word for MRI only. Um, in some state level examination, it can be asked that what is zeugmatography? It is CT scan or uh, MRI or X-ray. What is it? Uh, what it relates to? So zeugmatography and the meaning of zeugmatography is used for joining. Used for joining because various images in various planes will be joined together to give a whole built up of the image so the word zeugmatography was given now this term refers to the interaction between the static uh, radio frequency and gradient magnetic fields and it together creates a image but this term was not at all adopted because it was uh, because of its complexity so zeugmatography uh, it also tells that there is a joining of images because of radio frequency joining of images from radio frequency and magnetic fields and magnetic fields so but it wasn't adopted it is not an adopted word now we'll be talking a little bit about the physics of mri so physics of mri physics of mri now how does it happen so a person lies in a scanner uh, when he lies in the scanner, the hydrogen nuclei, that is the protons present in the water and as the human body is made up of 70% of water, there will be a strong alignment with the magnetic field. So, first of all, lying in the, lying in a scanner, scanner, then application, Then application of magnetic field, just give me a second, so where were we, yeah, application of magnetic field will be done, then after application of first magnetic field there will be application of second magnetic field, application of second magnetic field. application of second electromagnetic field electromagnetic field and this field is going to oscillate along with the radio frequency oscillates oscillates along with radio frequency but perpendicular to main field the first field perpendicular to the main field and it will be uh, in a parallel sequence with the second electromagnetic field and radio frequency so at the radio frequency and is perpendicular to the main field and is then pulsed to push a proportion of protons out of alignment with the main field and these protons are going to drift from the uh, drift back into the alignment with the main field and this is going to emit a detectable radio frequency signal as they do so along with the radio radio frequency so this was uh, this is the thing now after the, this there is a there they are pulsed and they are pulsed there will be a they will be pulsed so some of the protons will fall from this uh, alignment some of the protons will fall from alignment some protons fall from alignment they are going to fall from alignment when they are going to fall from alignment they are going to emit Detectable radio frequency emit detectable 
radio frequency so protons in different tissues example fat and muscles they are going to realign at different speeds because of the different structure and this is going to give us a image of the mri so contrast agents may be actually injected intravenously to enhance the appearance of the blood vessels though it is completely optional not at all compulsory thing then to then in the case of tumors and inflammation usually that dye is applied and these contrast agents may be applied directly into joints as well there are many um, gout and in arthritis they are directly applied to the joints and why it can be applied to a specific tissue we are um, uh, making it quite specific because in ct scan uh, it it is applied in the whole body and ionizing radiations are used but in mri they can be applied to a single organ or the whole body systematically and there will be no use of ionizing radiations so patients with some kind of metal implants like those who are going for knee implants and hip implants in that case uh, Uh, metal implants and uh, in many of the cases in cardiac pacemakers they cannot undergo mri because of the strong magnetic field it is going to pull the organ towards it so in that case in uh, any kind of metal implant a person cannot go for mri mri e is used to image every part of the body but is particularly useful in what all things i told you in neurological things in muscles and joints for evaluating tumor and for evaluating various abnormalities in cardiovascular diseases that is in the muscles and blood vessels both so these are some of the things so here we have seen the whole sequence that how it occurs this is the sequence of events sequence of events in mri and we have already seen that for all what all things that is used now we'll be talking about the application in detail application of mri in detail so applications though we have seen three four major application but now to discuss it in more detail so in clinical practice the mri is usually used to used to distinguish the pathological tissues such as brain tumor from the normal tissue that how the tumor is growing differently from the normal tissue so first of all brain tumor it will be used brain tumor then one advantage of mri scan is that it is harmless to patient so very very important thing in application part it is harmless it is harmless to patient because you don't have to inject anything there are no ionizing radiation so it is harmless to patients and there is use of a strong magnetic fields and non ionizing radiations in the radio frequency range so it makes it more safer as compared to ct scan and traditional x rays which involve dose and doses of ionizing radiation and it increases the risk of malignancy like if a person is having brain tumor and he is going for ct scan or x ray the chances of benign tumor to change into the malignant one the chances will increase so in fetus also mri seems to be a very safe technique for various detections so harmless to patients can be safely used in fetus so ct scan and mri they are usually read in a comparison there is always a comparison going on between mri and ct scan so ct scan it provides a good spatial resolution uh, the ability to distinguish between the two structure and arbitrarily small differences which separate each other so that is the benefit of ct scan but when we are going for mri it provides a comparable resolution and it provides better contrast re resolution the ability to distinguish between the two arbitrarily similar but not identical tissues may be similar but they are not identical tissues so mri has a, a vast application it is better than it ct scan so applic in application we can write that far better far better contrast to ct scan 
far better contra contrast to CT scan and safely used safely used to distinguish to distinguish soft tissues so the basis of the ability of MRI it goes to the complex library of pulse sequences that modern M medical MRI scanner includes. So each of which is optimized to provide image contrast based on the chemical sensitivity of the MRI. Various types of pulses can be given to produce various different type of images. So this pulses is going to first of all make the protons fall out of the alignment and then will be they'll be going back to the alignment they'll be releasing the radio frequency and that is how the image is created now let us talk about an example example of mri or there is an example that with a particular values of eco time that is te and repetition time which is the basic parameter of image acquisition a sequence will take on the property of the weight and the amount of water scanned these both things are going to be compared and they are going to give us a sequence so typically mri examination there it will consist of 5 to 20 sequences and each of which provide which are chosen to provide a particular type of information about the subject and this information is synthesized by interpreting uh, this can be interpreted by a physician so this is a example of MRI. Now there is another type of MRI which is called as fMRI. So let us talk about fMRI. What is the full form of fMRI? MRI we know magnetic resonance imaging. If we are saying f, f is for functional. Functional MRI. So functional MRI measures the signal changes in the brain that are due to changing neural activity. So it is going to detect the neural activity of the brain. So detects the changing because all the time there is some kind of um, signal going on in the brain. So detects the changing neural activity detects the changing neural activity of brain activity of brain so brain it is scanned at low resolution but at a rapid rate typically every two to three seconds it will be detected and increase in the neural activity is going to uh, is going to create changes in the magnetic resonance signal and it is also be affected by the blood oxygen levels in the brain and uh, this is also going to detect that how much oxygenated uh, oxygenated hemoglobin is reaching brain and how much deoxygenating oxygen is leaving brain because deoxygenated hemoglobin attenuates the magnetic resonance signal the vascular response is going to lead into a signal increase and then related to the neural activity so the amount of oxygenated hemoglobin is reaching and amount of uh, um, deoxygenated hemoglobin is leaving this all is going to give a contrast contrasting signals so the bold effect also allows for the generation of high resolution 3d effect in the fmri now if you are saying fmri fmri so what are the advantages of fmri so it can be non-invasively used for brain signal so most importantly let us highlight that it is for the brain signal of humans and other animals non-invasion without the risk of further problems because of the radiations that can be in the CT scan and it can record a special resolution in the region of 3 to 6 millimeter but very rela poor relative to the temporal resolution. So these are some of the advantages of MRI, uh, fMRI and what are the disadvantages? The bold signal is only an indirect measure of neural activity and it is therefore susceptible to influence by non-neural changes in the body. So different brain areas have different hemodynamics responses which would not be accurately reflected by the general renal 
model mm -hmm. and often used to filter the fmri time signals so these are some of the advantages and disadvantages of mm -hmm. uh, fmri like this we have completed the topic mri so what things you need to remember is fmri is largely used for and the table which we or the flow chart which we drew for the sequence of events occurring in the mri that is very very important let us just have a look at it so this this thing is very important for you to remember that is the sequence of events in mri do not forget this at all and uh, this is it for the today's class we'll be talking about genomic and cdna library in today today's gate crash course and uh, be there for uh, having a very nice idea about genomic and cdna libraries and as we say in the end let's crack csir ugc net Hit the bell icon for getting all the notifications regarding the upcoming videos and if you haven't subscribed the channel subscribe it if you really like my video and it really motivated you please give it a thumbs up and um, lastly use my referral code fb01 for getting the plus subscription recently a discount is going on and soon the prices are going to increase so use my referral code for getting a 10 percent discount and also use my referral code for attending the special classes do not forget to use my referral code for attending my special classes and special classes of other educators just one code will do that is fb01 so this is it for now we'll be meeting uh day after tomorrow we'll be meeting on monday again at 10 30 and we'll be discussing some interesting topic of csi csir syllabus if you're watching this video live let me tell you that we are going to talk about patch clamp method technique so we are going to talk about patch clamp method in monday's class so be there it's a quite interesting and important technique to be understood for csir syllabus so this is it for now it's a thank you from my side a very very happy new year um, achieve all the things that you are planning to achieve in this year maybe this year uh, brings lots of success in your life and this is it for now till then be happy keep on studying and come back for the class in the evening and on monday so it's bye from my